Hey, this video is a really important one, a crucial topic in computer science. We're looking at software in general, but more specifically in this video, um, the operating system, which is the most important bit of software running on your computer. So just generally software is the programs that exist on your computer. And clearly we contrast this with hardware, which actually conducts the instructions, follows the instructions that these programs have. And before we look at the OS in particular, there are two categories we can split software into. So first of all, you have application software, and this is for just user benefit essentially. So things like word processors, browsers, games, most programs on a computer are for your user benefit. So the second category is system software, which is performing tasks related more to do with the hardware and also providing services for other software. So things like dropping system, game engines, drivers, and utility software. So utility software is its own whole category or subcategory of this, but this includes things like encryption, backup, software and so on. So clearly they have user benefit but hopefully you can see the distinction. It's quite a broad, you're talking about broad strokes here basically, you can just put it in either category. But we're mainly focusing on the operating system. So the operating system kind of sits in between the hardware and application software. So all software running computer, including other system software, goes through the operating system as we'll look at. So now just focusing on the operating system, it's the essential software that links the hardware and other software together and generally manages the computer system from a software perspective, obviously. So in the world, Android is the most used, I think, just by devices, but clearly you've got things like Windows, Linux, iOS, and so on. It's worth just introducing the opera so it's worth just introducing the OS by talking about its main purposes. So firstly, the purpose, as I say, is to manage the hardware. And the point is only the operating system can interact directly with it. Every request from the other software has to go through the operating system. So the operating system has got control over that um, sequence of events. It also just manages the applications installed, including... We talked about application software. This includes utility software as well. Again, that's where the definitions come a bit blurred. It also provides or creates a user interface and to put this in technical terms, you're basically abstracting from the hardware. And again, this is to do with kind of security, basically, because the operating system is sitting as a bridge between the other software and the hardware. It's, this provi it's providing the security layer, this abstraction from the hardware. Just to expand on these a little bit more then, um, first of all, the user interface, there are two main categories. First of all, we have a command line interface, CLI, and this is just a shell that responds to text commands, as you may have used or have definitely seen. And then, of course, you've got your graphical user interface, which is just icons and other indicators and menus and so on. So all major operating systems have this, but they have a command line interface as well. So in terms of evaluation, it's quite obvious why a graphical user interface is better. It's much easier in most cases. But in terms of doing a very specific instruction, people like to uh, use the command line because it's much more direct. You can get it to do one thing about how to navigate loads of menus and so on and therefore it's much more compact you can chain your commands to do several things as opposed to just having to navigate loads of menus in your operating system moving on to a harder aspect we've got process management which is all about the operating system and the processor so in this context a process is a program being executed by the processor so it's almost like what's been currently what instructions are currently being executed by the processor and just for comparison, really, because no operating systems are like this anymore, a single tasking operating system executes one process at a time, suspending it with interrupts if necessary. So basically, it executes process one, then process two. And an interrupt is basically a way of stopping what the process is doing because something more important has come up. So, for example, the highest, the most serious interrupt would be if you turn your computer off. It's got to suddenly save or try and save all your stuff, try and prevent data being lost. So it's got to immediately interrupt what it's doing and run the interrupt code instead. But basically the whole um, idea of process management is a, com a process is going to do one thing at one time. Even a multi-core processor, each core can only do one thing at one time. So it's all about maximizing the worth of each process. So some processes are more important than others. So interrupts are more important than just general processes, general programs. So I said that's for comparison. Really, we're talking about multitasking operating systems, which, again, because of the limitations of hardware, execute one process at a time, but they allow multiple applications to run at the same time just by switching between processes. So in a single tasking OS, basically this represents one program. So you're running, I don't know, instruction on one program, and then you terminate it and run another program. So you don't have programs running in the background. So the two things the OS does in this context is to allocate CPU time for each process. So the amount of time the CPU spends at one, in one block for this process because it's splitting up in a multitasking OS and also prioritize them based on their importance. So they can be allocated different CPU times based on their importance. So say process one is given five clock cycles just arbitrarily and CPU and process two is given eight. 
but once it's finished um, with V8 for process 2 it goes back to process 1 and then say we've got an interrupt so say something's happened which requires immediate attention um, it will you can see we've interrupted the CPU time and then it will finish off what's left over so basically a multitasking error is juggling loads of different processes and it appears that they're running for background even though they're only ever being executed once at a time. So memory management is also about allocation of resources and making that as efficient as possible and this is all about memory space. So as you may or may not know, when you open a program, it needs to be loaded from the secondary storage like a hard drive into the RAM. The RAM is much faster and is directly connected to the processor. So when you have a program and it's open and it's about to be executed, it needs to be copied into the RAM. And generally speaking, the memory system is what allocates and manages uh, RAM space and so this process. So falling under this, if you say run out of memory because you've got too many programs open, it may the OS may enact something called virtual memory, where it basically partitions a bit of a hard drive to act as if it's part of a RAM. So it extends the capacity even though the hard drive is much slower. And there's a separate video on virtual memory, but you may not need to know about it for your course. By the way, just before I forget, the operating system itself has to be copied into RAM to be used. So when you turn your computer on, it need there needs to be a program to load the OS into RAM so it can then do the rest of the process. And this is called a bootloader. It's a small program that may be stored on ROM on your motherboard, perhaps. And all it, its job is just to copy across the RAM, um, the OS data from the hard drive onto the RAM so that the computer can actually start up using that operating system. And finally, it's important that different data and instructions for different programs are kept separately in the memory. And it needs to be clear which part of memory is for which. So this block is for program A, this block is for program B. They can't access each other because that's um, a security weakness, obviously. And that's often where a flaw comes into hardware where different programs can access data where they shouldn't be able to. Moving on to look at peripheral management. So a peripheral device is just some supplementary hardware device like keyboards, printers, cameras, and so on. So um, I mentioned it right at the start of the video, but device drivers fall under the um, system software category and the operating system uses these, which basically are programs that convert between different signals used by the each uh, peripheral device and the OS. So basically there needs to be a conversion between whatever the camera is using and whatever the OS is designed to use and so on. So a Sony camera may produce different signals to a Canon camera and the driver specific to the device has to convert to the generic input the OS is expecting. So the term interface which can be used both in the literal sense like an interface you can interact with or just a abstracted sense. Uh, a driver is an interface, it's hiding complexities of the hardware. The OS doesn't need to worry about being designed to work with every device in the, in the world, it can use the driver just to convert to one type of signal. So just two more points you need to know about. So user management is an aspect all about maintaining and allowing creation of user accounts. And so the operating system needs to manage username, passwords, and so on. And it's worth bearing in mind that not all operating systems actually allow multiple users. So iOS doesn't actually allow multiple users. You've just got one base user. So it's not always um, it's not always multiple users, but you can have clearly OS, iOS needs to maintain passwords and so on, or a password. So in these multi-user operating systems, there will be user account controls often, so you have an administrator of a basic user, and again, the operating system has to differentiate between the two. So the operating system also has to manage files and maintain records of all the files stored in secondary storage and things like their location, so in a tree structure. So it's always looking at folders relative to other folders or files relative to folders. And it also needs to maintain file permissions, i.e. what user can access what. So that is all about user account controls. Has that user got permission? Has it got file permission for that location? 